Hello everyone, this is image 14 for the Summer Interpretation Seminar course for D3 students at the University of Minnesota. On a previous video, we had discussed amylogenesis imperfecta. In this video, we'll spend a few minutes discussing dentinogenesis imperfecta. We have one bitewing radiograph to discuss. On this bitewing radiograph, we see multiple teeth with metallic restorations. Unlike the radiograph with amylogenesis imperfecta that we saw on a different video, this radiograph shows distinct difference between dentin and enamel layer. The cusps are not pointed. The crowns look a little larger. Actually, the crown is normal. The cervical area is narrow. There are no distinct signs of pulp chamber or pulp canals. You do not see any pulp chamber here, no pulp canals. The lamina dura that we see here is intact. The apical pedial spaces of these teeth are also within normal limits. And there is probably a carious lesion on the crown of this second molar. So in review, these are the radiographic features that we saw. We saw that the crown size was normal. We saw that the cervical area was constricted. We did not see any pulp chamber or pulp canals. Almost all the teeth had some kind of restorations. The apical pedial spaces were normal. So these are the common radiographic features of dentinogenesis imperfecta. Dentinogenesis imperfecta can be three types, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type 1 is associated with osteogenesis imperfecta. Type 2 has no skeletal defect. Type 3 is very uncommon, a brandywine type limited to a small group of people in Maryland, so most likely will not see that. The differential diagnosis of dentinogenesis imperfecta are only about two. One is amylogenesis imperfecta and one is dentin dysplasia. The amylogenesis imperfecta is easy to identify. It does not have much similarity in radiographic features, only the name is similar. So it should be easy for you to identify a patient with amylogenesis imperfecta. If you need, please go back to another video that discusses amylogenesis imperfecta. The problem comes with identifying dentin dysplasia. So let's review one radiograph of a patient with dentin dysplasia. So this panoramic radiograph shows a patient with dentin dysplasia. Here we have short or abnormal roots. In case of dentinogenesis imperfecta, we saw normal root shape. The crown is normal size, just like dentinogenesis imperfecta. In dentinogenesis imperfecta, we saw constriction of the cervical area. In dentin dysplasia, there is no such constriction. One critical finding of dentin dysplasia is the periapical radiolucency. There are multiple teeth with caries, but even the non carious teeth have periapical radiolucencies. Here, periapical radiolucency. This tooth is non carious or has a small restoration and there is a radiolucency. This tooth is non carious, has a radiolucency. That's about it. Thank you very much. I hope to see you on a different video.